Howdy folks, welcome back to the shed. Cider Club 2016 is nearly upon us, so I'm just going to make the final touches today to the scratter. We've got the press kind of tuned up over there. Uh, we've got the scratter here with a shaft that we're going to melt, uh, mount these uh, wooden discs on. Form a drum and we'll put screws into the into the outside to mash the apples up. A uh, friend very kindly cut me these discs on his CNC, however, we made a last minute change of, uh, of shaft diameter, so I've uh, unfortunately asked for them with the wrong size hole in the middle. So first task is to bore all these holes out to fit the 20mm shaft. Uh, I've got my routing fixture set up over here. It's not quite Mr. Friendly, but it's close enough. Uh, so I'm going to put all these on there. My two fences basically. Just Spin that out to size. Let's see how we get on. I'm turning this in the climb direction to reduce tear out, but it does tend to push it away from the fence a bit, so I'm checking each one for fit and finessing any bit a bit tight. Right, that's all my discs to size. So now I've just got to stack them up on the shaft and I'm going to sort of glue them and screw them together as I go along. Right, before I put the screws in, I'm going to give this a coat of oil, uh, make it a bit easier to clean and also uh, try to stop the apple juice soaking into it to make it swell up. Um, I'm going to do that before I put the screws in because it's going to be much easier. I'm going to use ground nut oil because that's uh, probably the best I've got. Right, screws. These are the screws I'm going to use, uh, 5mm stainless, well they're a bit long but they'll do. Um, I'm going to probably have them hanging out of the drum about 12-15mm. Um, now I want to get the, the total number of screws across the thing so that the uh, you know, they're on a sort of a, a 5 or 6mm pitch. Kind of like that, so that as they swing around the heads would overlap. Uh, make sure that if an apple's hanging there, stuck in the way, it's not just getting the same bit cut out of it each time a screw goes past, it'll actually get completely machined away. Obviously I can't put them all in one row on such a tight pitch because well, I'm not drilling holes that close together. So I'm going to put them round in four locations around the diameter and uh, put them you know, 20 or, 20 mil or so apart and then stagger the four rows slightly so that it covers all of the positions and I'm going to put a slight V in it to sort of try and drag the apples towards the middle so I'm going to put a V in like that, it turns this way um, but not much, you know something like that let's see how we get on
I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think there's any major points that don't get a screw passing through them at some point or other. At least the screw head, so it's going to cut any bit of apple off that's resting on it. Yeah. I think that looks alright. Right, I'll stick the uh, drive chain on and uh, maybe try and figure out a test. I've just realised that this is currently set to go the wrong way. Uh, the previous generation of this had two counter rotating sort of mangle rolls and big metal teeth on. It didn't work that well. And this was set up to drive this pulley in the direction of the motor and another one counter rotating with the chain threaded between them so that they would go together in the middle. This now needs to go that away. Uh, so luckily it's three phase motor so I'm just going to swap two wires uh, but also the tension is kind of on the wrong side so I'm going to see if I can get that facing the right way. Alright, so the best I can come up with without drilling another hole is to share that with the other one so at least that link pin doesn't clout into anything. Uh, I'll try it. If it flies off or skips teeth, I'll shorten it a link or two. But I think yeah, it'll probably do. Okay, so I've got it set up pretty slow at the minute. Everyone else's scratter has got a variable frequency drive, hasn't it? Pretty normal. It's not immediately throwing the chain off. When we get some load on it, that might all change. A little bit of wobble there. Alright, I haven't actually got the platen. Hang on, let me stop that. I don't actually have the platen yet. One of the other guys inside the club is sorting that out. So if I want to actually smash an apple, I'm just going to have to figure out uh, a quick and dirty test piece. It really looks like something that you want to put your hand in, doesn't it? I'm going to run it. I'm going to do this without my gloves on. You know what they say about gloves and saws and bits of farm machinery. We seem to have a torque issue. I'm fairly sure that with a bit of tune up, getting a very thin, thick shim or stiff shim at least and maybe winding the screws in, I think we'll be all right. So, let me go and find a bit of wood that's actually the right thickness, rather than messing around with all this, and we'll set it up proper. I think that's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. I suppose I could add a few more rows of screws, but I'm just going to run with it. The size of the chips is generally pretty small. That's what I want. OK, there's some big bits that it's thrown through, but I think once I could take care of the uh, the stiffness of the, of the platen, I don't think it's going to happen because there isn't going to be room for that. And, you know, if, if it does throw a few of these in, it's not the end of the world. This is the hopper, well three sides of it anyway, the, the platen forms the fourth side and it screws down, well, picks up on these three brackets. I'm just going to give it a quick coat of varnish before screwing it on.
Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you want to see this thing in action and the uh, inevitable chaos that will no doubt ensue, click subscribe and watch out for Cider Club 2016.